everybody, welcome back to Red Web. I'm your host, Brad West, and we're gonna be talking comic book culture, or superheroes, actually. And welcome my guest today. Um, on my left, I've got my girl, Angela. She's one of my volunteers with Heroes of Texas. I met her at the Community First Theater, where they do uh, screenings in the summertime for the Mobile Loaves and Fishes, MLF.org. It's an amazing organization that does a lot of stuff for the community. Um, you can check them out mlf.org and you can also check us out at the um casa superhero 5k coming up on the 15th we will be the marvel family in fact at the community first theater last month we actually got to meet mr shazam himself zachary levi so yeah that's how cool that is um also we have my friend john who literally kicks ass for a living you can find him at the combat crossfit um he's an instructor at uh jungle movement academy dark lord hammer C. C. Okay. Dark Lord H A M M E R C <laughs> um, on Instagram. Why? Dark Lord Hammer C. It's not that. Okay. Yeah, I was going to play, play with that pun in my head there for a second. I, I, I apologize. But yeah, um, check him out. He's really cool. And he's also one of our volunteers. Um, he's a little bit faster than me. He's Kid Flash. And you can see him with this. We're going to be all at the Casa Run. So that's super cool. And of course, my partner in crime fighting, Batman himself, Mr. Greg, and he is at Greg GB Cosplay, as always, as well as dlair.net, Dragon's Lair Comic and Fantasy. You can find him there all the time, hosting games and just being generally awesome. Uh, we're going to be there. He's going to be our Shazam at the Casa Superhero 5K. We love them. This is going to be their 10th year, by the way, so make sure you check them out September 15th. And then, of course, my favorite cultured bastard, Mr. Frank. He is the photographer and all-around inspiration for all kinds of super, super stuff. And he's going to be taking some pictures there. You can find some of his amazing photography on his Facebook page, Designs by Talon, um, spelled exactly the way it sounds. So today we're going to be following up. Last time that we had a group this awesome, we did our Diversity Switcheroo episode. And it was so amazing. And there was so much information to cover that we decided we are going to come back and follow it up with even more um, swap outs so for those of you who weren't here and those of you who just need a refresher um, we are talking about the modern trend to switch out characters of traditional boringness or straight white male with um, shaking it up with a little bit more diversity especially in the modern era with um, with different race, different gender, gender, different sexuality, all kinds of fun stuff. It's not a completely new concept. Uh, actors and characters have been changed throughout time and, and, and stuff. But especially in the modern climate and the modern political world, we're, we're actually getting a lot more of a spotlight on it, especially with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They've been doing a lot to really push that forward, as well as the CW DC Arrowverse. Uh, Greg Berlante has been a real pioneer pioneer in pushing the envelope for for bringing those characters into the forefront and we're going to be talking about some of our favorites some of our um more dubious least liked characters as well as the impact the growth the the ones that are the superstars the 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 less than um desirable ones and so we're going to kind of run it around from there so starting with some of the beginnings uh we were talking about angela greg we talked about some of our really favorite ones from from blast from the past one of my all-time favorite icons is, of course, Miss Eartha Kitt herself. The the best, in my opinion, Catwoman of all time, hands down. Um, and, yeah, I mean, nobody even batted an eyelash when, when she popped up as Catwoman. Let me tell you, that made a huge impact on the show and... Just culture as, as, as a whole, Eartha Kitt, she was a pioneer for like the black woman back then. I've read all three of her biographies, both of her autobiographies, and let me tell you, she lived a life. She was a fascinating person. If you ever get so a chance, mm -hmm. if you ever get a chance to just read up on some of the things that she did, and um, that so show was like... She got into. And how much trouble she got into. Getting kicked out of the White House yes, and her adventures not... in France, and oh yeah. my gosh, let me tell you, that is that is a woman whose life is to be admired. I mean... Just by speaking truth. Oh, just yes. by... Yeah, exactly. I mean... Catwoman was just like psh, a drop in the pool, but yeah, that's that's an amazing that's an amazing woman right there, and so and Catwoman, she was the first one to sing Santa Baby. You should really, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, and that that's, that's, that's a standard, her. yes. That's so, oh, yeah. um, but moving on from that, we've had oh my gosh, through the comics, through the movies, um, 
Who are we talking about with some really, really good ones? Well, of oh. course, I always talk about uh, Jane Foster Thorne, and I've been forbidden to talk about Jane <laughs> yeah, Foster Thorne. We've we just, we already established her. I mean, yes, everybody's super hype about Love and Thunder, so that yeah. was... That, 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 I'll, let you, I'll let you have that one. That really does, though, go to show how impactful that these characters are. I mean, that's such a recent storyline. It's only been within the past, like, three or four years in the, like, what, you know, like, 60, 70 years of the Thor comic book history, and it's it's getting picked for a movie. I mean, that tells you something. Of all of the, the, the history for Thor to be chosen from to make a movie the out writing of, was so powerful. That's, that's what they're going to go with for the next movie, so that tells you right there the need for this diversity and the demand, the demand mm-hmm. for that kind of character and that kind of story. So that that is amazing, and so there, there you go. <laughs> you, you, shoehorn, you shoehorn Jane in there, and congratulations. <laughs> um, um, talk, they're talking about Batman and stuff, and um, I, I, one interesting one that we were talking about, this is kind of a little bit of a shame that didn't happen. Uh, a lot of people forget that Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face, actually was originally portrayed in the Michael Keaton um, version, the... the um, the original Batman. The original, the original Batman, 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 Batman Returns. Batman Returns by Billy D. Williams. Yeah. Yes. So, um, had, had that had that progressed to the third one, had they not decided that it was too dark um, and switched over and it didn't get Schumachered, basically. Schumachered. That, that's what I call it. It was Schumachered. It was Schumachered. <laughs> to tell you um, the truth, it wasn't really his fault. It was the executives yes. and everything. They yeah. wanted a certain thing and they forced him into a certain way. Yes. Because, I mean, like all of the vehicles and everything were actually done by toy companies. Oh yeah, no, um, yeah. It, it, he basically just it was McDonald's. It was a, it was it had a lot to do with the licensing. Yeah. McDonald's didn't want to continue the licensing because they thought it wasn't kid friendly enough, and they lost so much I've money. Heard Joel Schumacher talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It, how, it was and, literally yeah. McDonald's set that domino into motion. They didn't want to do any more and, of the promotions, and, and then they just started losing licensing after licensing. I and actually that's when boycotted they decided, the third and fourth yeah. uh, Batman yeah. movies because of that. I because I wanted to see Billy yeah. D. Williams um, as two-faced. and Billy D. Williams. I think people a uh, lot for. People who are not familiar, because he was a big star. He, he was, was still a huge star big at the time. in the seventies. He before Lando Carusian, he was a leading man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a ladies' man, and to have Harvey Dent to be sort of suave, yes. beautiful, beautiful, yes. and yes. and turning him into Two Face would just heighten that tragedy. Yeah. I mean, this this is a guy who like you I know. I mean, he, Aaron Eckhart was no slouch. No, but but, but there is this idea like. There were women just throwing themselves thinking about Billy D. Williams back in the seventies. They would just faint. True. true. That's mm-hmm. just how like he he was he was hot. Hell, sixty year old I'm looking forward Billy D. Williams still gets women throwing themselves at him at cons. I've seen. So <laughs> let's let's not lie. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, what, one one small bit of gratification though was, and then and I just like lost it when this happened was when the Lego Batman movie came out and they went and they gave him they gave him a little nod and let him voice Two Face in the Lego Batman movie. I had to buy that. I had to buy that Lego Batman. I have Lego Billy D. Williams Two Face because this is one of my prize positions. I'm gonna let you know that right now. So yeah. So and even even then, that goes to show that that there was the demand for that. There was the demand for that diversity. Even yeah. even even years after that movie was made. So that's a really pretty cool one. So we talked about Heimdall and Valkyrie last time, um, and there was some arguments. I mean, I mean, okay, you got to kind of think about it. Norse mythology, Norse gods. I mean, yeah, okay, these were gods that were worshipped by, like, very, very white people who, like, really didn't even know black people existed. So there is an argument that maybe, you know, it was a little dubious that they had, like, gods of other colors. But, I mean, come on, it worked. It just worked. And um, not only was Tessa Thompson a, uh, a goddess of color, she was also... Yeah, there was some controversy to that, but you know they're gonna let her play bisexual in the next movie, and they're actually we're holding you to it, Marvel. We want to. I mean, I don't care what you do. I don't know who she's making out with, but I better see her with some like lip lock action with some some chick. If it's if it's Jane or whoever, okay. We're you 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 pulled the fake out last time. You got You got to commit this time. That's all we're saying. So. I heard there was actually deleted scenes where they really kind of fleshed that out. Where really. She was. Yes. Yeah. Well, they, they they you know they're saying they're gonna do it, so let's or let's Captain see. Captain Marvel, because there's that whole like fan art thing, you know. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> like when it went viral with like fan art of like, all right, Valkyrie guys. and Captain Marvel together. Go go to go to our Facebook. Then, Tell us who do you want to see Valkyrie make out with in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe? Let's let's hear that. Let's hear that from okay. you. <laughs> they themselves said it. Yeah. No, like they were like, we cute. On <laughs> <laughs> Um, there were some other really good ones. I know um, some of them, there's been mixed reaction. Um, 
uh, Zazzy Beats Domino. Oh, oh my gosh, she was amazing. amazing characterization. Amazing. People have problems. Now my only issue, my only issue with her is, as at first my thing was, is that it was it wasn't that she was black or anything. I had nothing. That was really cool. It was just that, like I just didn't think that Domino herself was white or black. I mean, she was a mutant. It was like saying Nightcrawler needed to be played by a purple person. It just kind of was like it was neither here nor there. As, as far as I'm concerned. And then, and, and like, dominoes go either direction. So it was like, sometimes there's black ones with white dots and sometimes there's white ones with black dots. And um, uh, I actually thought, in addition to it being just a minority as a black, a person of color, um, what's the condition that she has? The um, the skin? I can never remember. Vitiligo? Vitiligo. Yeah, vitiligo. Mm. I thought that was actually a really good touch because yeah. that actually helped to kind of destigmatize that a little bit. So that, that to me was more impressive than her being a black woman. And now the fact that she just was like fabulous on top of that really yeah. just added to it. And then the way she that they portrayed her colors. She was definitely my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> she was. She was. She was amazing. Amazing. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, there's like a good long list of them. Um, now some some are less less successful than others. Um, I didn't really feel that Jamie Foxx brought anything to Electro. Uh, honestly, um, no. I mean it wasn't but I think necessarily that was more writing. Yeah, that was more of the writing, and, but... Yeah, I think it's, that's the case of writing, and again, saying Jamie Foxx at the time was a big deal. was a bigger deal back then yeah. than mm. he is now. Because he had just gotten off of doing... Um, uh, you know, he it wasn't that long after when he had an Oscar, Yeah, and, and he was a, a viable star, and you get into this trap of that a lot of superhero movies get, like, let's get a big star, and let's pile it on to guarantee a box office... And then you start not thinking about the writing. You yeah. know, that actually brings up an amazing point. Do we think that sometimes that they're putting in diversity, people of color, women, etc., whatever, because they want yes. the diversity? Or because they want that star power. And they're like, you know what? We just want this star. We're going to say it's diversity, but we're just wanting to bring in that box office. I was watching... Uh, I was watching... Uh... Sylvester Stallone talk about how much he hated Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day. And, uh, <laughs> no, they hated each other. He he uh, he said they couldn't say. be in the same universe, not the same city or town or same universe. They couldn't exist in the same universe. Anyway, uh, he was talking about how uh, like movies. They used to make movies just by ideas. I have an idea. Let's make a movie. And he was saying, talking about the difference between then and now. Now it's. It's like a science making mm. a movie. Yeah, it's it's there's like like let's, we have to have a little bit of this and we have to have a little. It, it's not about it's about trying to squeeze as much money as possible, but while at the same time just trying to be um, as just like scientifically and politically. It's not about ideas as much anymore, and, there's a, and the it's hard very calculated. No, there's mm -hmm. no yeah, hard in it. There's no yeah. yeah. Especially the more it's money all that's calculated. Involved. Yes. The more money involved, yeah. the more calculated. I become. think yeah. what's a very more better example about star power, if you go way back when Will Smith did Wild Wild West, mm. um, and of course somebody asked Robert Conrad, who was the star of the original TV show, does that bother you? No. I don't have a problem with it, but I'd rather have Wesley Snipes play my character, because he seems to fit it better rather than Will Smith. Mm. Well, that was his attitude. He felt that, and it was just a terribly written movie. Oh yeah, but but <laughs> one, without a doubt, without oh, a doubt. But, sure. but but his thought was, I don't I don't care if you're going to cast a big a, a, a black man who's a big star. I just don't think you got cast the, right, the right one. Cast the right yeah, one. We, we talked about why last he, time. Yeah, and, and he he did he did feel like Wesley. Like, There's an action star. Yeah, because we talked about why well last oh, last time, I mean, and there was totally legit black cowboys. Yeah. I mean that yes. that that wasn't even. An issue for the story, but you're right. Yeah, it's the right, it's the right one. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that, yeah, that's kind of I like that. But that's also a movie that had a lot of problems as far <laughs> as the different. Uh, yes. There were so many different people's hands in the yes. bucket, mm -hmm. and like for example, the whole giant spider thing. <laughs> okay, all right. We, we got. We got. We got. Yes, we're, 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 yeah. we're, we're, we're not. We're picking apart the movie. We're, we're picking apart the, 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 the aspect. But of the that story. goes back, oh, of course, the whole issue where adapting TV shows were becoming a thing, mm -hmm. and you're getting diminishing returns. So why don't we go back to? And then, <laughs> and, and, and then you're talking about when you're talking about casting the right one. I mean, yeah, and it depends on the role. It, yes. it will depend on the role how how um, physically intensive the role is, which Will Smith can do physical. 
he can't do it as well as Wesley Snipes can, but then how many people on Earth in, I know, right? in Hollywood can? Um, mm. This is one of the reasons why I love I love uh, my Captain America. I'm so sad that he's gone, and I'm so upset that he and Black Widow are both gone, mm. Scar Joe, yeah. because we I... Get one more, we get one more Black Widow. I'm, I'm, yeah, but I don't. I mean, she, more is she, is she, is she, oh well, yeah, she gets to yeah, she gets to get her own little spinoff thing. But it's like we're getting rid of all the analog people, and what I mean by analog is yes. like I'm old school. Yes. I'm old school. I'm a fight choreographer. I like to hit. I like to you know move around, right? Um, this this latest Spider Man movie, it's like uh, it was okay, but as soon as Spider Man jumps in the air, I'm watching a cartoon. So mm -hmm. I've already seen a good Spider Man cartoon. Yeah. It's called Enter the Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I like people who can ground Ooh. and pound. And when I watch the behind the scenes of like when when Chris Chris Evans is doing stuff, when ScarJo is doing stuff, they're doing stuff. So you're not a fan of the new Lion King? Not, so so so, <laughs> so, so that, I'm just saying, going on that guy's credit, you know, with the recast and stuff like that, getting the right one and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, nowadays though, I mean, you don't have to really know anything when they're doing fifty camera takes, you know, between right. one yes. punch and one yeah. kick. But to Everybody be fair, but to it. be fair, Tom Holland is pretty freaking physical. Tom, in, no, in Tom Holland. I've, yeah. I've seen his like what YouTube like his yeah. his own Instagrams. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Tom Holland. Yeah, he stuff. he really will, he'll he'll it's do as much that, as they'll let him. He will do as much as they will let character. him. It's that he's playing a character yeah. that is mostly unfortunately, yeah. right? Got to be in the air. Um, I mean, going back like. Um, going back on subject, passing the shield mm -hmm. to Falcon. Falcon, right. Um, and also, I mean, I'm personally, I want the next generation. You know, I, I want to introduce new heroes and new names to the MCU so that, um, so that more people will know them and we don't have to keep seeing the Spider-Man origin story over and over again, you know. That's why I thought because it would be so like brilliant for the new Spider Girl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I thought it would have been brilliant for the well, new Spider Girl. What what the the, the, Parker. the Falcon and Winter Soldier show is actually I'm literally looking forward to because you know it's got it's got two of the, the mm -hmm. my favorite characters from the entire series in it together. So that's just I'm, I can't yeah. wait. But uh, that's actually a fortunate side effect of just the of the medium mm -hmm. because in comic books we grew up with comic books. Comic books timed. Time runs at a completely different capacity, you know? And so, yeah, Captain America could be Captain America for 75 years, you know? Now we're at a point where in in the movies, no, Chris Evans can't be Captain yeah. America for 75 years. And I'm totally fine, you know? with, I'm totally fine with Sam and being Captain. So totally it, it just it turns out we're, we're fortunate that they sync up. Now we've got this situation where the, this, the, 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 the diversity in the comic books has just given way to a natural progression that we can mimic in the movies. And so that's actually going to be pretty, that's going to be pretty amazing. So I'm kind of stoked. I'm kind of stoked for that. I'd like to see how that's going, especially where what with what I'm understanding that the concept behind the show is going to be, where it's going to be taking its cues, which aspects of the storyline they're going to be picking up on. Mm -hmm. That's going to be some really compelling st storytelling, especially in the context of a TV show, because they really couldn't explore it that deep in the movies anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to be really lucky on that one. Um, some of the other ones that I, I, I was going to mention is, like I was saying to you guys earlier, that the Supergirl television show, when it first started off, I wasn't really feeling the the McCad Brooks Jimmy Olsen, and I don't think it had anything personally to do with the fact that they had that had they had reinterpreted him as a black character because, I mean, to me he did a really good job. I just felt he was too old to be Jimmy Olsen. They made him they made him too confident and too experienced. In my, I mean. Uh, he was too much of a contemporary, especially when they eventually did bring Superman on. They seemed too equal and i always in my head mm -hmm. picture jimmy olsen as like you know yeah. a yeah. kid yeah. to superman um but um and then this comes down to the actor um and or the writing he eventually grew on me and i actually i'm gonna be really sad to see him go he's not gonna be on the next season so that's oh, man. that yeah that's a little bit of a, yeah. of a sad one um but uh, one of the big characters me personally and this is the one that i really want to bring up that is one of my favorites because this has been a long time point of contention with me my favorite DC comic book character of all time, and this is the first one I ever collected, and this is my favorite, is Firestorm. And for those of you who are not familiar with Firestorm, the character and the concept of Firestorm is that he's this, like, dumb jock high school student, um, and um, he gets caught in a nuclear explosion with this super smart scientist who creates this new kind of nuclear reactor, and they get fused together into one being, and they have to rely on one, of an, one another in order to be a superhero. One's got the brains, one's got the brawn, and and it 
takes both of them. One can't do it without the other. And I love the concept of that they, they, they play to each other's strengths. They depend on one another. They learn to get along with one another. I love the character. Um, eventually, they wrote the character off. And then in the early 2000s, they, they reinterpreted him and they created this new character, Jason Rush, who just happened to be a black character. I just hated the character and it had nothing to do with him being black, but he was just pointless because he was super smart and a jock and did everything by himself and he didn't need he bonded with random people and it's like the whole point of the character was he was nuclear fusion and he had to be two people fused together but he didn't really need anybody else and i found he was kind of completely lame and i just i never really cared for the character they eventually interpreted him on the cartoon and they kind of tried to make him where they bonded him they turned ronnie into a pe teacher or whatever but then the flash tv show came out and I was so excited because, like, they had Ronnie and the professor, and they combined it together. And then um, and the then they act- him. And then, <laughs> right. But then the actor who played Ronnie um, moved on to another show, and they replaced him. And I was a little bit hesitant because I was like, "Oh my God, what are they going to do? What are they going to do?" Then they brought in the new character, sort of a new character. They brought in the character of Jax, who was actually based on Ronnie's best friend from high school in the comic book. So it was a pre-existing character. But they wrote him in the same context as Ronnie originally in the comic book. I love Jax. I love Jax with all my heart. I was so happy with him and I loved him in the show and I I was so pissed when they wrote him off the show because they, they wrote him right. And so it has a lot to do. And this goes back to my point of saying it's not, it has nothing to do with what the character is. It's how the character is portrayed, how he's handled, how he's treated. And, yeah. you know, and if it's a quality character and this is what it should be. If it's a quality character and they stand on their own merit, you know, then psh, diversify the hell out of that stuff. Well, yeah, and you yeah. bring up uh, the point when you're saying about quality mm-hmm. is where um, this is, I think, a very easy way to, like, on the flip side, to compare, like, with Iron Fist, where you have a show that first season, which was at best adequately written, and the character, the central character was at best adequately written, and you have an actor, unfortunately, although he actually has a fair number of creds to his name. He was on Game of Thrones. He was actually on the Sarah Jane Adventures over in Britain. He is not a strong enough actor to elevate material. Mm. And then, and then it really, he's really, unfortunately, he really sticks out as the weak side when all your supporting actors around are really coming off stronger because if no other reason, they're just better at their job. Mm. I really think it was writing. And, but... Oh no, writing is a thing, but uh, but writing Finn Jones, horrible. unfortunately, a good actor could have elevated some of that material. I agree with that. And Those because you look at the character who's playing Colin what's the Wing, time frame? Yeah. current. What's the what's the time frame between when this original uh, character came out and oh. then oh. how how much time passed? Because then we get into this situation with like the Little Mermaid, and it's just like. If I was recasting Little Mermaid, yeah. I'd have picked a red-headed white girl. Yeah. I would have. Well, but then, but then, then I looked at it and I was like, wait, has it really been like 35 years since this movie came? <laughs> Grow up! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. now, if, who can, let these yeah. kids have a yeah. new... Anyway, and, I mean, yeah, and the character of uh, Iron Fist, he, he came out in the 70s. And he was okay. a white kid who was, grew up by these monks and etc. And it was a very classic comic book scenario of the era. Uh-huh. And so there was that thought, do, you know, like, should... There was there was a contingent. Why can't you just cast an Asian actor and just make him a jerk mm-hmm. <laughs> and let him grow? But then, but 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 it really wasn't the point. You go back to the writing where, yes, the problem is he is a jerk. With unfortunately, he's such a jerk. He's such a petulant child mm-hmm. and immature that it don't matter who's going. And you know, you could say that you're actually saving an Asian actor from having well, to that, embarrass that himself. Well, that goes to that point. That <laughs> is a point that a lot of people make. Is is that when it goes down to um, swapping out the race and everything, it's yeah. like. You you're you're putting some of the writers they're in a they're in a yes. screwed if they do screwed if they don't yes. situation yes. where but, but it's said, like where you get you get mad if they don't replace them with said minority but then if you do that minority wrong then they then, yeah then and, they but get it goes too. back to the whole idea if yes the character is supposed to be flawed but there should be layers and nuance mm. and you have to give something to the actor to work with and in Danny's case. That key character of Iron Fist, you didn't have a lot to work with, and and unfortunately, Finn Jones isn't an. Ex- I want to be fair, probably not an experienced enough, uh, a mature enough actor to actually create that. Because especially when you compare him to the actor who's playing Colleen Wing, 
there is so much pathos and, uh, in just her she was in her actually. eyes in just a look and awesome. when she when she's yeah. cage fighting you could tell there is something going on like why is she doing this i mean she's kicking ass and she's great but are you crazy why <laughs> are you doing this and you could tell that there is some she you could tell the actress is like thinking why am i doing this why am i have to give a reason a, some kind of obscure motivation and communicate that to the audience yeah. And, and, that, that and I know you clear. were saying that you were like checked out of the whole Defenders thing and everything, but yeah, between her and Misty, I was completely and utterly like, I, I was cheated out of Daughters of the Dragon. That was that was where I wanted so, it to go. That would have been awesome. I know yes, that they were kind of going that way at the end of the yeah. season. Mm-hmm. I think you have to. I think I think you definitely have to consider the time gap. I think you have to consider the time gap, but then at the same time. Um, but then when it's a character that you love, I can completely identify oh, yes. you, with you. Ooh, because oh, oh, they're yeah. recasting Blade with another black guy, and I'm just like... Well, again, though, <laughs> again, Maharshal Ali, I mean, he's Oscar winner, and that's another... And what, Wesley we go, isn't. You don't have to be an we, Oscar no, winner to be a bad guy. We, we, we go back to the, what we were saying earlier, you know, they're cashing in on that. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, that oh, has right, a lot yeah, to do with right. it. No, but, has a, but I mean, that has a lot to do, not only with why he was cast, look, but no, why no, Blade no, no, was no, moved no. forward. You know why they're, you know, where they're getting the cash from? The cash is coming from Wesley. Nobody would even want to see Blade in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the MCU if Wesley hadn't played him in the first place. Because whoever, mm-hmm. they, if they could, they could have picked yeah. some Jack, some, some person who didn't have skill on his level if he yeah. had never said some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill <laughs> we wouldn't even want blade in, in the mcu I don't, yeah. I don't want vampires in my he wasn't MCU. even yeah exactly but, he wasn't even that yeah. he wasn't even that big of a character so yeah. so, so you're welcome Herschel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and black people you're welcome i'm welcome <laughs> Well, yeah, and you well, and and it is also marketability. The question they're probably asking is Wesley marketable now, mm-hmm. and even though he's probably still in pretty sound yeah. shape. But Marasha has well, he's got two Oscars, and he actually played in one of our shows before. Yeah. He played in our block or in our. Sandbox. Oh, and he All was like he looks cool. Like, he looks cool. He yeah, was pretty like, much. He, he was pretty much good. the best yeah. part of yeah. season one of, of, of yeah. that. So yeah. yeah. From what I've seen, I don't know if if I've seen all the stuff, but yeah. from what I've seen, Wesley's been acting like a real class act. Oh hell which, yeah! Which oh kind yeah! Of surprising for a lot of people. He, was, he was super like, cool yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a cool Blade fan. Mm-hmm. I don't know Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Wesley Snipes fan from like early, early on. Well, like, I worked no, in movie no, theater. I'm I not can... lying. I stole the I stole the film trailer f- for New Jack City, and well, I have it. It's in my it's, no, it's no, in my treasure can, chest. I promise you. I can respect I love, I love Wesley, especially doing Wong Fu. Oh, all of his. Oh, the very fact that I love. I mean, that's asking a lot of him to be a drag queen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that and, was really and, asking a lot. And yeah. Classy, yeah, he did it. Fair. Yeah, so. But, but uh, getting back to writing, I think that uh, you were talking earlier about uh, there was a character that you were very happy with about how they were portrayed because they did it right. Yes. Uh, you want to talk about that? Oh, and that would, be the, that would be the legacy character, Ryan Choi, back from 10 to 12. Mm-hmm. Twelve years ago, uh, the Adam Mid-July when they were 20, when they were having legacy characters, and he was uh, a character from Hong Kong. He was a Westernized PhD physicist. They had set him up in the hometown of the Adam, and the important thing is Gail Simone. Gail Simone, another who, brilliant writer, another yeah, paved the way for women, really opened doors. Gay man, gay community's best friend in comics. <laughs> um, I up there, yes. He, his character. She understood like how to write this character socially as a Chinese person in the modern era. Not he was not Shang Chi, not a stereotype, very westernized, but still unquestionably Chinese because of his family. And there were very subtle things that uh, Gail put in there that that I could identify with, that I could empathize, and says, "Yeah, this is what a modern Chinese." guy with immigrant parents deals with they're low they're little things but they just give it weight and verisimilitude yes my dad is a pain (laughs) i know he loves me it's a burden i want to try to honor him but again it's not heavy-handed either and and she's able to slip these things in especially because so successfully i'm very impressed because the narrative structure way of the ryan choice series is very quirky 
it's a very weird almost kind of funny satirical because you get these weird narrative bubbles that like I'm really I'm kind of here in the twilight zone here <laughs> you know I'm in this quirky twilight zone and and uh, and and I'm going with Ryan like he doesn't know what's going on and he's trying to figure it out but at the same time he's very much the, his ethnicity is kept intact and here's a white woman who did her research yeah. who talk, Who clearly talked to people mm. and used a little sensitivity, common sense, and effort. And again, yeah, these are elements that are distinct to an Asian family, but I still want to make him real mm. and yeah. accessible and modern. I don't want to turn him into a stereotype. Mm. And that's hard. And, I, and I, the fact that the, the book only lasted two years just killed me. Mm. And then they killed him. <laughs> Which you know, the character love, love really good writing like that. I mean, I love what they're doing with Kamala Khan, and really uh, going into her whole Muslim family and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and really doing that with a lot of respect. And just, it's I think that's a really amazing book, and I'm really happy happy that that book is out there. Yeah. Um, I love books that are different like that, that actually give you a little glimpse into a different society, and that's going on around mm -hmm. us that uh, kind of demystifies. Yeah. Uh, different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important. I think, I, think it's very it, important. I think it's a lot what Angela said earlier when she was talking about um, we still need to make that push towards the diversity in creators as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you can't you can't expect to only have Chinese people write Chinese characters yeah. Yeah. or white people write white yeah. characters or there would be no diversity whatsoever. Yes. Yeah. You know. And it's about writing character. Right, character. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you're saying? And, oh, I was just saying, like, Ms. Marvel and, like, I kind of, um, we had talked about, um, like, the characters, like, taking on the mantle, and do we need those m familiar names? Like, do we need to put the diversity into the familiar name, or, like, can we let them have their own? Mm -hmm. And people want the familiar, they crave the familiar, and so I, I understand why that's done. But I mean, like in talking, um, in talking about Ms. Marvel, um, you know, my daughter and I watch the Marvel Rising, uh, like YouTube series and the movies, mm. and um, and that is so full of diversity. I mean, there's Ms. Marvel. Um, but would your daughters you know, have known that Ms. Marvel used to be another character? Yeah. Um, maybe not, but I don't think that that matters. Yeah. You know, I. Or if she was a different know. name of a different character, yeah. would she be just as impactful to a younger audience? I, I, Eleanor loves the character. She loves yeah. Kamala Khan. She loves America Chavez. Well, and nice. Well, yeah. for instance, you know, for instance, um, one of the things we were talking about, and this is one that, like, again, Miles Morales, definitely a, a you know, forefront of this particular discussion, um, Spider-Man, you know, mm -hmm. does he have to be Spider-Man to have that impact? I mean, for those of you who don't know, in the actual animated series, he's not called Spider-Man. He's called Kid Arachnid. So in the merchandising and stuff, for smaller children to keep the confusion down, he's not actually called Spider-Man. So he's crossed over as, he's, he's got a different name. So there's those sort of things to consider, it's, you know. It's a gamble because obviously writing, anytime you want to write a new character, it's a gamble. Mm -hmm. It really is a risk. I mean, and sometimes you get, you catch gold with, Kamala Khan like mm -hmm. I haven't read it but I've heard since day one when she came out people were excited praised success I think about Wicca and Hulkling mm. who knew two teenage gay boys gay uh, gay characters <laughs> since one's a scroll <laughs> you know, half scroll, scroll. Um, spoiler alert who, <laughs> who would have figured that there'd be a huge embrace because you never know mm -hmm. And so when you do, sometimes doing sort of the quasi-legacy character is a safe way to introduce and strengthen that character. I mean, I know we were going to get to this, but a perfect way is like the original way they were handling Rhodey 30, oh God, 35 years ago, <laughs> yes, um, where he had a history and, they, and, and where he became, he was Iron Man mm -hmm. for quite a while. He replaced... Tony Stark when he was having his drinking problem yep. and then eventually he became a different character but he was leading the title mm -hmm. and but the character existed before he didn't come out of nowhere 
Right. He he was existing. They eased him in, and and fortunately you have Dave, um, um, Dave Michelin. That's right, Dave Michelin. At the, I think that was that era, because he did Demon in the Bottle. Yes. <laughs> uh, and he just managed to do it right, and so yeah. Sometimes you get lucky, and it is always. I mean, because you hear about that pushback from a couple of years ago where a certain uh, Marvel executive was saying, oh, I heard the reason our sales are falling is because we have all this too much diversity, where he was only, when, and then he had to backtrack and explain it was a couple of disgruntled voices telling him yeah. that's the problem, where, where Ms. Marvel is still going strong, and Jane Foster was, well, or I don't remember if Jane Foster had been revealed at the time, where the female Thor was was captivating people. Oh yeah. So and I mean, I can't believe how many statues and action figures came out with her. In oh the, yeah. In a short run yeah. of that comic series. I mean, I've I've got them all except for one. Mm-hmm. Well, here, one okay. So I watch, I watch movies, and I will, and uh, yeah. I watch the movies. I, I've seen comic books mm-hmm. on the shelf. I've seen comic books. In Brad's house. <laughs> I don't read comic books. I watch the movies. And from what I've learned from watching the MCU is that the hammer is to be wielded by someone who is worthy. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. Now, I do watch YouTube. And I, there's YouTube channels I watch. Which, and, I, and so I will click on... I, I went to see Captain Marvel. I didn't click on anything before I saw Captain Marvel because <laughs> it just Smart. all looked negative. And I was just like, if I'm going to be negative, I'm going to have my own negative opinion. I'm not going to go in there on somebody else's Good call. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and I, 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 I've, I've listened to some some idiots who, I'm like, do y'all watch movies? It's, it's oh, you know, you're trying to make the, 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 the white male look like he's an idiot by putting the woman in, or this, that. And it's like, have you watched the movies? They've been making white males look like <laughs> idiots forever. <laughs> Jack Burton. <laughs> okay. It's still a hero. He's, he's a hero. Yeah, right? How is he a hero? I love he Jack hero? Burton. I love Jack Burton, but if I am ever in tr- trouble, don't you call Jack Burton. You call his buddy. You call his buddy. You call his buddy. You call his stereotypical Chinese friend. Chinese friend. Who all? Because you know every Chinese person knows kung fu in a way. <laughs> which, which, mm. anyway, anyway, that's. I'm just saying. Look, uh, uh, the, 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 the the few that they're replacing, as far as I know, right? Like anybody can be Captain America, I guess, right? Um, anybody can be. Well, anybody can wield that hammer. Okay, so it's like you're a female Thor now. I don't, I don't know if they're gonna call her Thor. Are they gonna call her Thor? Yeah, that was yeah. that was the that was the point mm-hmm. we had last time. Is that. That, that, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. In the comic book. It makes no sense to me, but we've already covered that part. She okay. is she is Thor, and he is referred to as Odinson. Yeah, we've already established that doesn't make any damn yeah. sense, but mm. we've moved past that. he became unworthy. we moved past yeah. that. Yes. And, and okay. Black Panther. You you don't have to be T'Challa to be Black Panther. There you so, go. So, you could be Thank Shiri you. could be Shiri. Shiri was could actually Black Panther. Well, see, I don't read the books. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so we're all going to catch John up real quick. The and, hammer and says, the hammer says, whoever is worthy shall have the power of Thor, not shall become Thor. That's why it makes no sense. Uh, yes. Superman wielded that hammer. <laughs> he didn't become Thor. That's why it makes no damn sense. That was squirrel just marketing. That was just marketing. I'm just telling you, that was just marketing. Yeah. I mean, and she had a transformation. But, but, no. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a squirrel girl? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And a koi boy. Is... And her sidekick I'm is a, called koi hey, hey, boy. Hey, hey. Get back, get back, get back, get back. back, 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 back. Rain it in, rain it in. No, he forgot <laughs> chipmunk hunk. Rain it in. Chipmunk hunk. Okay, now that one I didn't know. Oh, my God. That, that one's new to me. That one's new to me. Okay, guys. And it's a hit. <laughs> All right, so. Um, it's amazing. Here, here we're gonna go. We're gonna touch up on some of the infamous bad switcheroos. We're gonna oh talk no. about. We're gonna go the other direction when they made when they made the wrong choice and went the other direction. We were talking about. We talked about Finn Jones. <laughs> yeah, we talked about Finn Jones. Yeah. Well, I mean, he wasn't. He no, was, he wasn't yeah. a switcheroo, but he, he was wasn't a bad switcheroo. Choice. <laughs> this, this is the episode about the switcheroos. Okay. Um, now, one of the ones that um, there is some debate as to why it was done was, um, and we're talking about um, Asian ones was um, the ancient one. In, oh, yes. in Doctor Tilda Strange. Swin. Oh, yes. Tilda Swin, Swin. Who, you know, her. turned Love. out to actually be kind of cool. Yes. I mean, okay. you know. Tilda Swinton is fabulous. 
Oscar winner, most probably one of the most original actresses on the planet. Hey, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, people. When I, I honestly, when I, when she first came on my radar, I thought she was like. Uh, a trans or something. I honestly thought because she was so androgynous. The first movie I ever actually remember remember, remember her in was Constantine. Yes. Yeah. And when she played Gabriel, I th I thought she I honestly thought she yes. was like. She yeah. rode two polar bears into battle and she was a white while witch. swinging yeah. a sword. <laughs> <laughs> she could have three yeah. eyes and six yeah. toes on just on both feet combined, and, and she still was hot. <laughs> <She's> right, <laughs> man. And then. <laughs> And that's what we're talking about, a great actor who can, uh, someone of her level, can take shit and really make it <laughs> less shitty. Lying. We're lying. And make it less shitty. <laughs> no, that, no, that, uh, we gotta keep it up. Did you ever see the it. film where she was, uh, she was a vampire with... Uh, yes, with, with yeah. Tom Hiddleston. Oh, so good. Yes, and, and, but anyway, going back to that, you have the, the whole point of where, okay, let's make the ancient one who is in the comics an ancient, stereotypical Asian... Tibetan monk type uh, uh, sensei. Let's make turn use a woman. The problem, of course, this was this happened around around like movies like um, Exodus, where there was no Middle Eastern people st uh, starring in that film. Nah. <laughs> and you had a lot of it, it was in the flood where people Asian people were getting a little tired of whitewashing, mm. and as fabulous. As Tilda Swinton is, there is the conflict. And as an Asian actor, I know there are a lot of good Asian actresses. You already have Benedict Cumberbatch, who was an international star thanks to Sherlock. Mm. You have major stars in there. Tilda Swinton is not going to guarantee a box office. It's going to attract a certain crowd mm. because she is this amazing presence. But she is not going to guarantee you two hundred million dollars. Yeah, she was. She's going to guarantee you an Oscar nomination. <laughs> <laughs> and Oscar bait, yeah. Yes. Oscar and bait. so there are great actresses from Asia that could have done the role. And when the uproar happened, the excuse, and you could tell, you could really tell that it was sort of a desperate uh, excuse to saying, "I don't. I, we didn't want to create the stereotype of the dragon lady." which is sort of this brutal, tyrannical woman who is just uh, be like practically a man-hater, beating down, right. dominating. No. And, and, and we mentioned earlier, you could have gotten Gong Li, who is one of the great respected actresses of the last generation from China, mm. to play this character. This, and she's not like just some pretty thing. She would have shaved her head for that role. Right. <laughs> It's she well, would have a, done that. And again, and again, it might have been another just poor excuse. But the the the, the line that I, I I found coming down was that they were trying to avoid alienating any one particular Asian market. They didn't want to put a Chinese actress because they didn't want to limit themselves in the Japanese market, and they didn't want to put a Tibetan actress because they didn't want to limit themselves in the Chinese market, well, et cetera, et cetera. That's why, and but, they were kind of of the mind of, if we can't pick one that makes them all happy, we'll just pick one that well, alienates them all, or then, something of that nature. That's <laughs> why you get, then you get someone like Michelle Yao, who, who the, the whole of Asia loves. loves. Yes, it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a double It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged yes. mm -hmm. sword because... Um, you got people saying, "Well, you know, I want somebody that represents me, and I'm a I'm a young uh, black kid." Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what you need is some parents. Uh, <laughs> I, I had parents, and they and it's, it, for every six movies with a bunch of white lead characters, they had sixteen. They would go out and get. They might not have been the best movies, <laughs> all right, because I saw Virtuosity, but. <laughs> It was a action movie starring a black man. And, I like and, that movie, and, actually. And, so. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Uh, oh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but I'm saying, I mean, but the thing is, like, I mean, did you just start watching movies last year? Did you grow up on Disney movies? That could be your problem, too. Because yeah. if you grew up on Disney movie, Disney hates yeah. women. Yeah. They hate a lot of people <laughs> because they always put them up in castles. Yeah, and have why don't those, rescue. why so, do none of those princesses have mamas? Mm, yeah, so because it's like. That's the Brothers Grimm. There are <laughs> plenty of movies with, with, with there are not plenty. There aren't plenty. But there are a lot of movies with, with strong black characters. There are a lot of movies with strong female characters. You, you, a lot of people aren't watching them. However, mm. like I said, double-edged sword. When you when when you get a chance to cast an cast an Asian character or something like that, maybe maybe you try hard. 
Try a little hard. Try a little hard. Yeah. You know, you know sometimes, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean. <laughs> well, I know that they're making a big deal about Shang-Chi coming out. And it's oh, going to be all Asian oh, cast and all that, so. Yeah, okay. Well, we're, we're, sticking, to, we're sticking to the the, um, the, the swap out diversity story. So we're going to go back to some of the women characters. Okay. Um, I know a, one that actually did really well for a while, and that's only because just, personally, I think it has less to do with it with being a female character, more to do with people who were just kind of over Wolverine. Um, was um, Lara Kinney, X-23. Love her. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, great mm. character. She she took over for Wolverine in the comic book for a while while he was dead. Um, so, Encased um, in adamantium. Yeah, in case in adamantium. Of course, he's back and again. And they found and, a delightful girl to play her in the movie. Yes. Oh, and, um, awesome. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, that was actually a pretty good And she one. wasn't a white girl either. <laughs> right, this is true. But, um, so that one actually did pretty pretty well for, for a, a good long and while. one of the things I really loved about her was she was actually taken from a cartoon from X-Men Evolutions. That's where she was created. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy who created her in the cartoon actually wrote her into the comics because he also started writing some of the comics. So what's the name of this character? Yeah, X except I didn't... Uh, oh, the girl? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't like I did not like her originally in the comic books, though. The original storylines with um, X-23 in the comic books, like the whole, yeah. like... Uh, there was there was definite I wasn't too fond. Yeah, it came I was in, a ton of, I, There was some things. Yeah. I like. I hated the fact that she killed her mom. Yeah, she was forced to kill her mom because the scent thing that they created. That I, I hated that whole thing. I loved in X Men Evolution, her mom survived, and that her mom was actually trying to save her daughter, uh, X twenty three, Laura Kenny, from the. Uh, from what was, was it Alias on. that she first crossed over into, or, or um, Runaways when like she was trying? Uh, it was to... NYX. NYX. That's what yeah, it was. It was yeah. the NYX when yeah, but that was still Jessica Jones though. So, but uh, still, and then for yeah. the longest time they really didn't do anything with her. She was the cardboard cutout of Wolverine. It's like, oh, Wolverine's in twenty books, so we're going to use X twenty three because we only need her claws and her healing factor, and not even really do anything with her character. And then recently, they gave her her own book. Uh, and they made her all new Wolverine, and they um, and they've been doing a lot of character growth with her, and they actually gave her sisters and some really mm -hmm. cool stuff going on. So I highly suggest picking up those books; they're really fun. Yeah, that she was actually pretty cool. Um, one that has a lot of staying power and actually has is um, going to be making her film debut soon. Um, this is both female and gay. Is Renee Montoya? Yes. Um, I'm actually curious if she'll be appearing in the television show at all either renee montoya um another character that originally appeared on an animated series renee montoya was a detective from the batman animated series she was created for batman animated series back in the 90s and um as was harlequin um as was harlequin and she was eventually incorporated into the comic book and became um the lover of Batwoman, and um, when the question, the question is another one of my favorite characters created by um, Steve Ditko, he, um, they wanted to modernize him. He was dying of cancer, and he passed the mantle on to Renee Montoya, and she became the new question. And she developed quite a pretty strong fan base and continued on even after she broke up with Batwoman and carried that mantle on for a good long while. And the new um, Birds of Prey movie coming out this fall with Harley Quinn and in it, um, she will be in that movie. And uh, the new Batwoman series that's going to be coming out next year on the new Warner Brothers um, Plus, Warner Brothers Extended or whatever streaming service is going to be featuring Batwoman. I would be hard-pressed to think that she won't show up on that at some point. So um, another another really good character. These are some amazing ones to check out. Google them or whatever it is y'all do. Hit your local comic book shop up <laughs> and research. And I'm um, sure your friendly neighborhood comic book geek will help you find some out and read about them and get some trades in there. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in there. Oh, there's um, a lot of really good um, stuff coming up soon. Good stuff Speaking coming. of Birds of Prey, would be Cassandra Kane. Oh yeah, another like. So, now, did they Asian. actually get an Asian actress to play? Yeah, Cassie. That's, okay, that's I haven't actually. Oh, did yeah. you? Okay, I just saw the makeup and I couldn't actually see much of it. I haven't seen actually anything on the Cassandra Kane character yet on there, so that's exciting too. She's so young, yeah, young, like, yeah, cool. So yeah, for a while uh, yes, there was a. She's like the focal point of the plot. Isn't oh she? really? Yes, like nice. they're protecting her or something. Uh, oh. But uh, but when you're well, saying about, I was pretty sure that Harley Quinn was a focal part of the plot because, again, you know, marketing. So <laughs> the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but actual... going talking this about plot. playing out the swapping and one that's successful, just thinking about especially female characters, is you go back to Jessica Jones and and Jerry Hardwick, the lawyer. 
mm-hmm. who of course originally is a man, and yes. instead they made her a lesbian. Yes. And there you have, um, um, I just blanked out on the actress's name. Carrie Ann Moss. Carrie Ann Moss. Amazing. Getting to, uh, getting to really sink her teeth oh my in this incredibly, God, amazing? incredibly flawed, yeah. interesting role. Yeah. That has that they're able to give fast. It's even like one of the few interesting things in Iron Fist because oh, she actually has a good side to her. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> you know. not that it really does much good, but oh my god! Yeah, if you've not watched Jessica Jones, there's just so yeah. We want to talk about layers to a show. Yeah, yeah the Jessica Jones and yeah, I I, I I can't believe I completely forgot about her. That was just amazing yeah the, the als part was just so hard for me to watch um my, my grandmother who was like my inspiration and in everything to me um she died of als and that made it it was so hard to watch but at the same time she did such an amazing job of of, of just wow i because she's a fascinating character but she's Ooh. Oh yeah, she's going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. oh no question, no question. And Carrie Ann Moss does such a great job. Yes. She yeah. Did. She. Did. Yeah. Um, another one that um that is another favorite of mine that I was really um I was really hoping that my girlfriend Anastasia would be here to, to follow up on because we were talking about um, Monica Rambo. This is a really cool one that I'm really excited because she's actually going to be in the um, one of the new Disney Plus shows as well. Um, for you know, those of you who aren't familiar with it, um, I know Marvel really wants y'all to think that that Carol Danvers was the first female Captain Marvel, but actually, fun little fact, Monica, the daughter of her friend Maria that you saw when she was in, in the past, actually in the comic book was the first female Captain Marvel. She uh, she um, took over as Captain Marvel after Marvel, who another gender swap because Marvel in the comic book was in fact male. Um, and in but um, come on, what's her name? Who who played so, her in the movie? So oh, you're oh. good. You would do that. To I me. brain fried. I brain fried. <laughs> yeah, me too. Annette Bening. Annette Bening, thank you. There you go. Annette, who Annette Bening played pretty awesomely, by the way. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so Monica Rambeau actually was <laughs> not only the was not only the first oh. female Captain Marvel. She was the first Captain Marvel of color. And so she was actually pretty amazingly cool character and too. On uh, Wandavision, the Wandavision. That's yeah, the one she's going to be in. The show that's coming up. The um, because. When we it's see the her in time. Captain Marvel, it's in the past, and so then she's going to be grown up. She's going to be grown up, so on I'm really hoping, and I know she won't be Captain Marvel, but I'm hoping she'll get the powers and become Spectrum, because mm-hmm. if y'all were paying attention, there was a little Easter egg nod to her, because her mother, Maria, her call sign on her plane was Spectrum, so, and Spectrum is her alternate name that she took after, um... Was it a Photon? Was it Photon or Spectrum? Which one did she I have on the plane? Photon. I meant the after she went from Captain. I thought she went from Captain Marvel to. She's Photon. had she's had several names: Photon, Spectrum, and yeah. I, well, she just she used to be much more powerful. Let's just leave it at that, <laughs> right? So, so those are, those are some really cool ones too. Um, mm. Let's see other ones that people kind of got mad at. We were talking about um, Ben Kingsley and the Mandarin, who it turned out actually wasn't even the Mandarin at all. But um, don't read the comic books. Right, I thought it was hilarious. I actually, you know what. Here's my problem with Ben Kingsley and the Mandarin. It had here. nothing to do with the fact that he wasn't Chinese. <laughs> oh, no, no. Chinese. I, I, I don't have... Oh, he was supposed to be Chinese, too? The Mandarin yes. is Chinese. Oh, Mandarin, yeah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> the fact that... I mean, but you can have nicknames. Or, okay, I don't ahead. have a problem when they clearly said, okay, he's not really Chinese. He's an actor. Mm-hmm. He's a stooge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Th- that's logical. Mm-hmm. My issue was it why is he a stooge? Why don't we have the real one who is like arch nemesis to Iron Man for decades? Yeah. Okay, I wonder if they'll address because I I hear that that that's coming. Yes, yeah. yes, yes he that's is coming. actually so he's going to that's be the going villain to be in Shang Chi, mm-hmm. which is more palatable than Fu Manchu, and he will be Chinese. <laughs> no, no, no. My issue with the Mandarin in Iron Man three was: Am I the only person who who noticed that it was the same plot as Batman Begins? <laughs> Like the Mandarin was Raja Wu, <laughs> and it was, am I the only one who saw that? Yeah, but Ben Kingsley don't look anything like Ken Watanabe. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it was almost the same plot, and and Killian was was uh, Liam, Neeson. Liam Neeson. Oh, I'm yeah. just that's me. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, we've um, got a few more minutes left. Anybody particularly cool you are excited about seeing coming up? I know um, Marvel at Comic Con announced some um, some of their upcoming slate. Um, of course, you know Monica yeah. Rambeau is going to be appearing. But one of one of the ones that they're doing. And um, personally, I never really read the Eternals, so I really don't know I, that much I about have. them. Um, the only actual Eternal that I'm at all, funny. the only Eternal that I'm at all familiar with is Makari because I liked Quasar was one of my favorite comic books Avengers back in the day. Quasar is my my one Avenger go to cosplay, and Makari appeared a lot in Quasar. Makari is gender swapped. Yeah, among and others, then you're having a deaf character. Well, that's actor. cool. Finally, you know, we uh, haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about um, people with disabilities as well, much. Well, DC's already beating them to that anyway. <laughs> and with with Jericho coming on the Titan show. And, oh, yeah. Yes. And what, why don't we have, like, you uh, know, robust... No, robust yeah. People with, like, a little bit more weight on them to be... I mean, if, 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 if having uh, a yes. power, this superpower... Do you need to be a no, certain no, weight you don't. to have a superpower? I mean, I... I, I can understand I, Captain America being in shape. Yes, uh, but, because that, that came in a bottle. <laughs> and there's actually an independent comic called Faith, where it's... Uh, I know, yes. Iron Man totally yes, got him out of Yes, and they're planning yeah. to make that I want to see it on movie. screen. I, I was, and okay. one of my favorite Squirrel Girl yes. mm-hmm. that I really want to see on screen. She is also like she's known for her. Thunder what is going on with that? Shoot. They did not announce that at Comic Con, but that's been on the slate for like two years now. Um. Well, it's it's Marvel Rising. No, 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 no. The live action, the um, the the, the, the new girls. warriors. Because they cast Squirrel Girl, Mister Immortal, um, half a dozen others. I mean, they've had them announced for a while. Um. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, as far as I know, like the Squirrel Girl that was cast was cast for Marvel Rising. Mm. So well, it looks like what that's about all the time we've got today, folks. Um, I think we pretty much covered all of it. I missed all the ones that we got for last time. Thanks so much, guys, for coming. I mean, this was an amazing talk. Uh, if you guys, if anybody out there has any that we missed that you want to talk about, please feel free. Check me out on Instagram, Brad's underscore red underscore web, or you can go to just Brad's Red Web on Facebook and tell us what you thought about the show. Tell us if you got any ideas. Tell us if you want to see something in the future about stuff or just... Drop us a line and make sure you go to our YouTube channel on Kaiju Kaiju Labs Media. Like and follow, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us. Bye. Oh, I'll-